All right, today I'm going to try to show you how uh, to use the patient-generated subjective global assessment app. It's called PT Global, PT-Global. It's available in all the app stores for iPad and I think other large format window phones and tablets. So I'm going to open up the app. And if you see across the top, there's seven tabs. And those first five tabs are the ones that are meant to be filled out by the patient. So essentially, you would give the tablet to the patient and they would fill those things out. So I'm going to just go through this as though I'm a patient. So the first section is just patient characteristics. And you can see you can use either English or metric um, units. I'm going to go ahead and put in my reference number, just an initial. I'm going to write that I'm a 60-year-old male. I'm going to be 170 centimeters tall. I'm a man. Move on to the next tab, which is weight history. Ask about history over the last six months, one month ago, what you weigh now, and what it's been in the last two weeks. So I'm going to say that six months ago I weighed 79 kilos. One month ago I weighed 72 kilos. And I currently weigh about 68 kilos. I'm going to say that my weight in the past two weeks has decreased go to the next tab. All right, now it's going to ask about intake. Compared to normal intake, food intake is unchanged, more than usual, less than usual, and put less. Um, ask about what you're able to take in. Normal food, less than amount, normal amount, solid, little solids, only liquids, only supplements, very little of anything, only tube feedings, um, or normal food. So I'm going to write that I am able to take in normal food but a less than a normal amount. All right. Now the next is going to ask us why we're having a hard time eating. So for this particular patient, I'm going to write no appetite, doesn't feel like eating, maybe that things taste funny, and that he gets full quickly. Now if you were to choose pain, or other, they both have asterisks by them, which means you can free text in other things. If you open up the pain, it asks you where the pain is. The other would include things that make it hard to eat, like depression, money, dental problems. All right, this is the fifth and final tab that's meant to be filled out by the patient, talking about physical activity. It talks about physical limitations that they have, normal, no limitations, all the way down to pretty much bedridden. I'm going to put that this is, uh, he's not his normal self, but able to get up and about. So this is the end of the patient section. So we get a, a notice saying, um, thank you for completing this. Please return to your medical team and let them know if you have questions. This is when the patient would turn it in. And the next session is meant to be completed by the dietitian or other care provider. So you can see we're going to talk about disease state, metabolic stress, and physical exam if we choose to fill that portion out. So the first is the primary diagnosis of the patient. There's several options listed. Cancer, AIDS, pulmonary, ulcers, trauma, chronic kidney disease. I'm going to choose cancer. That's going to give me a host of other subcategories to choose from. Solid tumors to hematological malignancies. I'm going to choose for this patient multiple myeloma. It also gives me the option of disease stage and secondary diagnosis. We're still working on the primary diagnosis right now. Um, the prime, I'm not going to put in disease stage for this patient. I am going to put in that this is a recurrence. I'm going to go to the next tab. All right, now we're on to the metabolic stresses. Those portions of metabolic stress measured by the subjective global assessment include fevers and corticosteroids. We can choose both the severity of the fever and the duration of the fever. So we're going to choose that he has no fever right now. Um, we are, however, going to put that he's on some dexamethasone for treatment of his multiple myeloma. We'll choose that level for right now. Go to the next tab. This is the physical exam portion. This is the portion of the subjective global assessment that has frequently confounded dietitians because it takes a significant amount of time to complete. Not all dietitians are comfortable doing a physical exam or even fully trained in doing a physical exam. And at a lot of institutions like mine, a physical exam is completed by other care members of the team, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to always have it in here in our exam. It does make the SGA more accurate, but it's absolutely not required for this um, scoring tool. You can see the physical exam includes muscle mass and tone, and it talks a little bit about the muscle mass and tone and gives you the choice of mild, moderate, severe, or no deficit fat stores. 
same thing, talks a little bit about it, talks that they have mild, moderate, severe, or no deficit, and then fluid status, which also talks about um, ankle edema, sacral edema, and ascites. So you can choose to fill those out if you have the capability and know those things, or you can just skip over them. And now we're going to get our total score at the end, our SGA scoring report. So if you look here, you can see our total score for this patient was 13. It has his BMI listed at the top as 23 and a half. And it talks about the different sections of the PGSGA. We get the PGSGA triage score and the different sections. And you'll notice they're different colors. And they're different colors based on what the severity and concerns are. So if we had a section where we didn't have any concerns, say he was eating fantastic and no problems chewing, swallowing, nothing, eating normal food, that section would probably be green. Um, we've chosen ones that ended up making them orange and red, so there are areas of concern. So you get the PGSGA triage score. You also get the traditional SGA score ranking, which is the ABC level that's been um, used for many, many years. This form also gives you the weight change in the past six months, the weight change in the last one month, and it talks about the triage of the PGSJ, what sort of things you need to take care of right now. There's a critical need for improved symptom management in this patient and or nutrient intervention options. So this is the report that you can choose to send to an email address right there. I'm not actually going to do that part, but you can send it to any email address you want. When you want to start over on a new patient, you click back to patient, you can clear off the form at any time and start over. So that's the PT slash global app that's available. It's a pretty fantastic way to get that PGSGA score in so in a way that we can use more frequently for patients and help make it really accurate to assess their nutrition needs throughout the course of their disease and treatment.